Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's me, Mark, from Apprentice One to One and Power Sonic. Today I'm going to talk about van security again. Having just recently experienced a vehicle break-in, I've shared videos about this before, maybe 10, 15 videos ago. I last mentioned it, where I showed the pack-out system we use and unloading the vehicles every day and leaving nothing in them. And it's for this exact reason. Um, we'll go out and look at the van in a minute and see what damage has happened to it. And I am mindful that people have said in other bits of content I've shared that you could be giving some of the secrets away to potential tool thefts of how to, sorry, tool criminal thieves of how to get into these vehicles. But they already know that's the reality of this thing. And perhaps another um, tradesperson might see this and realise where the weak spots are to offer some better protection for themselves. It is a difficult line to walk, I get it. So I'm not going to pretend otherwise, but I've decided it's better to share this than not. Um, you can get the the plated systems to provide extra protection around the weak points um, of a van. Sussex Locks, I think, provide quite a wide range of sets and they've been on Tom Nagy's channel where they've kitted his van out with some of this gear. Um, so if you're wanting to protect some of the weak areas on your van and improve the, the locks and alarms around it, you can look into all of that. We've been down that rabbit hole before and it's not something that we're, we're doing any longer and I'll explain why later on in the video, it's just personal preference in the way we try and um, limit our loss through um, attempted vehicle break-ins and it's born through experience, direct experience um, and that's where we are with things at the minute. But yeah, just to speak about the wider aspect around all of this I guess and you know there's the issues of should hotel car parks be doing more to help us out when we are staying away. I paid 15 quid to park at this particular place. I know there's all the signs saying that any loss or damage to a vehicle and, and whatnot is your own responsibility and I guess that is what it is. I don't know why you wouldn't expect to be able to park your vehicle safely when you're handed over 15 quid for the privilege in a car park that's maybe got 100 vehicles doing exactly the same thing but that's the way it is. Um, there's the issue around the law and policing. I don't blame the police. Um, I think it's really difficult for them because they know that the chances of prosecution in a scenario like this are limited. Unless you catch someone in the act of actually doing it, the CCTV evidence is very rarely of any use. Um, they don't leave any physical evidence such as blood and fingerprints and the like. Um, and it's just so rife now if they was to investigate every single occurrence of this, there wouldn't be enough police officers to do it. That's the harsh reality. They're under-resourced, underfunded, and have bigger fish to fry. You know, that's the that's the truth of the matter, isn't it? And as frustrating as that is, um, when you suffer a crime like this, and it is horrible, you know, that's just the fact of life, isn't it? So I don't have hold any grudge against them whatsoever. Um, you know, they've made it as easy as possible for me to obtain a crime number for if I was going to go through insurance. Really simple now, just through a website on the Metro Metropolitan Police website. So you just fill your details in, explain what's happened, um, where it happened and such, and they'll give you a crime number. Say they'll have a look into it and get back to you in 48 hours. Quite what they do in that period. I don't know if they do anything, but um, yeah, just to put that out there, I don't really see... You know, with the resources they've got, what they could really do. Um, and knowing that the law's not really on their side because the punishment for such crimes is, you know, it's not really there. And the chances of having a successful prosecution are limited. So, yeah, there's other changes that need to be made to help back them up in terms of resources, I, I would say. I do have a grudge with some of the vehicle manufacturers, though. And we'll have a look at my van in particular in this case. And it's the same base model for a number of different manufacturers. So I think this one goes to Peugeot, Vauxhall and Toyota. There may be others as well that I'm missing off that list, but they all work off the same base spec of the vehicle and then kind of badge it up and put a few different bits of their own in here and there. So it'll be the same method to get in to all of those different um, types of vans. And it's just when you see the actual thickness of some of the steel on your um, doors and panels in the back area and the way that the, the locking mechanisms are so easily defeated, um, I think they should be doing more to stop that. And it wouldn't really cost a great deal more for them to do so. Maybe instead of um, putting so much focus on these fancy radios and heated seats and extra cup holders, they might want to look at some of the basics around at least guarding the locks with some um, thicker, more tough steel encasements around you know, cables that you can pull to unlock a door or getting access to a, a lock to quickly pop it open. Um, you know, they don't have to go to the trouble of these aftermarket kits which are visible on the outside of the van and cover up those weak areas internal to the door. As soon as the thieves realise that there is that extra 
um, layer of protection on those areas and it's going to take them longer to cut through, um, there's more of a chance that they won't bother. Again, it's that argument as if they would just go to the trouble of cutting a big hole in the roof. You see that where they, you know, the, the, the steel on the roof itself is very easy to get through and they just jump in, take what they like and off they go. Or a side panel, one of the thinner sections, they just cut through that and again um, go through the whole panel, peel it down and then you can't use your van for the rest of that day. That's the thing that has led us to where we are. Um, at least now with the condition it was left in, you know, we was able to use that vehicle for the rest of the day, albeit obviously having to leave it empty and try and make it safe so it's not a, a cut risk for somebody walking past the, the vehicle parked up. But if you've got a whole side section of your door peeled down or a hole in your roof, you know, it becomes unusable, doesn't it? It's um, basically got to be taken to be repaired. You need to organise a courtesy vehicle. Um, that's a day written off at least. So, yeah, that's, that's where we are. Um... In the grand scheme of things, it's a very limited bit of damage. And yeah, same issue again with all the aftermarket locks and alarms. The alarm went off on that vehicle in the car park last night. It's around the back of the hotel. Nobody noticed. They'd, people breaking in didn't care. Um, there was no alert to me, obviously, because there's no uh, connection to the internet for any kind of monitoring. I know you can get your know, dongles and such to do that, but... You know, even so, you go out there and there's a gang of organised criminals breaking into your vehicle. You know, what are you going to do? You know, the police aren't going to come out and react to that quickly. And you don't want to be putting yourself in that situation where you could be getting physically harmed along with the vehicle, as horrible as that sounds. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of those. At home, we approach it differently. So, you know, when the vehicles are parked up on my drive, we've got CCTV that covers the driveway. If anybody steps on the drive at any point, I get an alert on my phone. I've also got a very protective and sensitive hound in the house and if someone even breathes on our driveway he goes absolutely bananas so that, that's if it's me coming back from work or um, somebody coming to cause aggravation he reacts in the same way all the time so we know about those things and you know there's a level of protection there based on where we live that I think is reasonable and and proportionate for the vehicles being left overnight but you know when you're away from home there's no access to the internet in and around the vehicle that's going to be reliable you can't watch it, you can't leave your dog guard in it. Well, I guess you maybe could, but um, Cooper wouldn't be ever happy with that if I took him off out to work all the time, dropping him off around the vans parked up. <laughs> so it's really difficult. I don't know what the answer is. Um, I'm going to speak about this on a few bits of social media. I'm going on a few um, other people's podcasts and radio shows to talk about this, and I'll keep sharing what's happened with my vehicle, how we put it back together. It's not the first time this has happened to us. We've had windows put in, we've had locks drilled, um, we've even had spare tyres stolen and pa parts taken off vehicles in the past. Pickup trucks where they even take the tie downs out the backs, so they wear 40 quid each. Um, yeah, it's just an epidemic that um, we have to deal with as tradespeople and I guess it's that area of risk and costing it into to jobs. So there's a, an overhead aspect on our business now to do with putting right vehicles that have been damaged during the acts of crime. Um, and that's kind of sad, isn't it? But there you go. We'll go out and look at the van. Um, we'll see what the crack is out there. I hope it's of use to some people. Uh, and again, if you've had an experience of this yourselves, drop them in the comments below. I'd be interested to see what your experience of it is. You know, I'm not saying this is the right way to approach it. This is just the way we're doing it now, having had years of experience of you know running fleets of vehicles around doing the day job. Um, we've been through the process of sign writing as well. I've had that said a few times that if you don't sign write, write them, you're not going to get broke into. That's just a myth. You've just been lucky. They don't care about that either. They're just looking for a vehicle packed up in a hotel car park. They don't care if it's sign written or not. They'll have a look inside and see if there's any tools in it or anything of value. You know, it's um, it's probably not making your prospect of getting broken in lower by having it sign written, but I don't think it makes it a lot higher either. We went through a period probably of 10 years not having a vehicle sign written. And these latest batch of vans that are now over three years old, they were actually due to go back. We were due a new fleet of vehicles, but because of all the issues, I'm sure some of you are all dealing with right now as well. The new ones haven't arrived yet, so we've still got these. And um, we've been lucky. They've been all right. We've not had an issue up until this this particular time, I don't think. So um, it's one of those. It's just something that can happen to anyone at any stage, regardless of what locks you've got, regardless of what sign writing you've got. Um, all of the preventative measures you take are all well and good. But um, if they want to be in, they'll be in, and um, it's just trying to sort out the mess afterwards. Let's go take a look.
Okay, so you can see here with the damage we've got on the van, there's obviously been uh, an attempt to hack a great big hole in the side. You see they've drilled a little hole down here, I would say, and then use some tin snips or a, a rudimentary tin opening type tool to get access to the internals of the door panel. And then you can see there's a secondary, very thin metal plate that they've also cut through there in the same way. I don't know if that's coming across on camera. And then obviously gives access to the locking mechanism um, for them to be able to open the side loading door. Now this is alarmed and when that door opens the alarm would have gone off. These gangs don't care about that, they're not bothered about CCTV or alarms or anything of that sort. They just want to be in and um, take whatever they like really. Fortunately as I showed on the video um, that I've circulated on social media already, we leave our vans empty. Those of you who've watched my channel before will know that we carry it the bare minimum anyway and anything we do take to work goes out to site with us if we're away in a hotel it comes into the room with us um, and the vehicles we don't put any slam locks dead locks um, any extra security features on them basically trying to limit any damage that might result from someone getting in i've been there and got that t-shirt where we've had vans secured to the high heavens and you just end up with a great big hole in a side panel or a, a door that's totally peeled down or even holes in the roof um, yeah, if they want to be in, they'll be in. These are organised gangs. These are people just wandering around looking for an easy van door to poke into, um, picking the easiest target. They're very careful in what they select. And even if you've got your van marked, you know, my own opinion was to keep the vehicle unmarked. I've done that for many, many years. This is the first set of vans we've had sign written in a long, long time. Um, and we've been all right up until now, to be honest. This is the first time we've had a break-in in a, in a good while, but it was always possibility. And now, like I say, we've got to sort this out. It's likely going to be a new side door. I've been looking at the panels you can get. So you can get protective plates. You fit over these areas from Sussex um, locks. And, you know, you could put one of those over this damaged area, obviously flatten it off and be providing a bit more extra security on that particular door. You can also get them for the back doors. So there's some weak spots in these areas on the back doors as well. And obviously the same on this side loading door. There's going to be a similar setup here too. So um, yeah, you can get those plates if you wish. I think with this been a lease vehicle, which is another issue if you're making modifications to leased vehicles, that comes with another can of worms. Um, they're just going to want it putting back to its factory default condition. So it's going to be a new door, isn't it? And yeah, just to put that out there, really, if you are trying to secure your vans, our position is um, not to make them easy to get into to the point that you can just open the door, leaving it unlocked because you've got other insurance requirements in terms of theft of the vehicle in full. But if someone's going to try and make entry that the damage they might cause is as limited as possible and not so much just for the repair costs, but you've got half a chance of carrying on with your day. So at least you're not losing a, a day's wages. We were able to do that. Got the van loaded up, went out and did a day's work, and now I'm back at the office sorting it out in my own time, trying to get the repairs organised so we can get this vehicle back to full working condition. Um, it's just the way it is, isn't it, at the end of the day? I don't blame the police, especially. I think if they were to investigate all of these vehicle crimes, they'd just be overwhelmed. It's... Um, you know, it's beyond the scale of them being able to investigate and even if they did, the prosecution of those people who were um, found to have been doing it, you know, it's, it's small, the law's not really on their side, so I get it on that front, as sad as that is, they have got bigger issues to be dealing with based on the resources they've got at the end of the day. Um, so the process I had in this case was to report the crime online to so the Metro Metropolitan Police website. You can report your crime online, get a crime number, and then obviously if you're wanting to claim through the insurance, you can do that. I've requested the um, CCTV from the Premier in our stay at, so it was Terminal 5 Premier in. They've got a car park supposedly with CCTV, good lighting, a security barrier to enter and exit the car park. And yet still, here we are, paid 15 quid for the privilege to park in there as well. Um, and it's not the first time we've been done at Premier in, you know, it's one of those... These people know where tradies go and park up for the night and they know generally if they're working away there's a chance there's tools in there so they're going to want to be in um if you go and look at the comments on the tiktok video in particular that i shared there's lots of people saying in there about getting slam locks um getting deadlocks getting cameras alarms and all the rest of it and that's all well and good but it's usually coming from the experience of people who've not been broken into before this isn't my first time at the road rodeo on this um, and you just tend to deal with more of a mess and if you read through the rest of the comments on that particular video you'll see other people saying we've had all of that 
they cut a hole in the roof, they peel a full side panel out, they're only single skin in places some of these van panels, um, you can very easily get into them, you'll see the photos of that on social media and while they make more noise in doing it, they still get in there, um, it's not really a deterrent to that particular type of criminal, it's just not, um, there's people who've caught them in the act and they just get threatened with weapons to leave them alone and F off and they're going to carry on regardless, they're not fussed, they don't care if they get seen on CCTV, it's just not not a factor for them so I don't know what you do about it I don't know what the solution is our approach is try and limit any potential damage from someone breaking into the van to a smaller area as possible and keep your tools safe with you out the vehicle at all times we never have anything in these unless there's a driver in with them it is as simple as that for us um, and the proofs in the pudding because if you go back and watch my earlier videos I've spoken about van tool theft loads um, every time I've shown the vehicle I've shared that for other people as well. We use the pack out trolleys, so everything gets stacked up modular, wheel it out in one hit, it's not a great drama or trouble. You look a bit of a wally sometimes, head into your hotel room with a great big pack out trolley tower, but it is what it is. I'm not fussed about looking daft if you keep the gear safe. Um, yeah, just to put that out there really, I shall let you know what the resulting outcome is from this fix on the door. I am gonna ask um, the leaseholder to play it, because obviously it's gonna make it stronger for the future. Uh, but I'm very doubtful that they want to go down that road. Um, yeah, catch up with you in a sec. Okay, so you'll see in there a quick look around the um, damaged section of the van. I won't bore you by going over it all again, but it's just to put this out there that, um, yeah, it can happen to anybody, and if it does happen to you, I'm trying to take it in uh, good faith and not dwell on it too much because it can start to really affect you if you um, get too upset about it. Feelings of anger and wanting revenge and all the rest of it can take people to a bad place, so... Um, yeah, I'm quite easy going on it. It's just one of those things that can happen the same way anything can to anybody at any time. I've still got my health. We're still trading and going strong. Um, this van can be repaired and we'll be back to the normal content as usual. Um, just putting this out there really in the hope that it might um, bring some further knowledge to me about products that might be available and methods that can help us in securing our vehicles and to raise awareness on it really. And if you haven't had an issue with... Um, vehicle crime as yet coming yourself very lucky and i hope that continues for you because it's not a nice thing to go through for those of you who've suffered with it already i sympathize greatly and um yeah drop your comments in below and share a bit of what happened to you and we'll see if we can um raise some more awareness around it i guess until the next time catch you later